Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the shim stock spaces in the, um, the radius guard, sorry the radius handle that I did the other day. So what I've got here is two pieces of brass shim stock about 0.1 millimeter and I've got four pieces of um, polyurethane paper blend fiberboard. This stuff's really nice. You can buy it at any art shop. Um, it's not quite cardboard. It's not quite plastic. It's somewhere in between. And I found that when you buff it, the edge hardens quite nicely and makes quite a durable um, space. It doesn't swell a lot with uh, moisture or anything like that. So yeah, so I've pre-cut these pieces to match the, um, the shape. So that this diameter the dimensions that we need here for the for the spaces and I'm only putting them on either side of the piece of ivory you can if you want put them behind the guard and behind the pommel as well but I prefer just to put it in the middle um, there's just less hassle when it comes to uh, piecing it all together because we've really got six extra pieces I imagine if you put it on either side you can have another six so that's 12 pieces you have to put together. Now it's alright I suppose if you're using slow setting epoxy but for this exercise we're going to use fast setting epoxy which will cause it all to cure much quicker which means I can work and grind the handle faster without having to wait for the glue to dry. So I've pre-assembled the handle with the pre-shaped pommel and the, the pre-cleaned -pre um, pommel nut on the end which you saw me make in another demonstration, another video. So I've just put it all together to make sure everything fits. Okay. Everything lines up nice and neatly. Now you must remember that if it doesn't line up neatly, you need to adjust it before you put your shim stock spaces in. If you try and use the shim stock spaces to compensate, it may potentially not work out as nicely as you would like. So just assemble it like it is. It is going to be slightly um, a fraction longer, the handle, obviously because of the spaces. But uh, that's okay, we've already compensated for that by grinding our tank shorter and whatnot. So now I'm just going to remove the shim stock spray, the, 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 the pommel. I recommend using a shorter bar, but yeah. There you go, you can see how deep my, um, my pommel nut goes in, all the way into the handle. Now, for clarity's sake, like I said in a previous video, we want to put these all together in the same way. So I've got the, 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 the lines that are marked for my tang here. I'm just going to extend those lines through there like that. So I know that these must all go on in this order and with all the lines joining up. Because if I accidentally put it on the other way, it won't align up as, as neatly as I've um, arranged it here. We need to remove our pieces. Now what I like to do is I like to cut each piece and place it in order like I'm stacking it up just before gluing. What I use to cut is this. It's a um, one millimeter um, cutting, cutting disc. And uh, I just use it to cut the slots in. So let's go very quickly. So like I said, I start with it. Now you can mark if you like. You can measure your tang and you can mark it, but I'm running it long enough I can guesstimate what is needed. Not always right correctly, I suppose. Let's just widen that a bit. Never claim to be a perfect knife maker. No matter how much I would like to believe that.
Okay, now see, I'm making them a little bit too big. I just need to make it a little bit narrower so there's less wiggle room. All right, so now I'll put my piece of ivory in. Like that. Don't force it in yet. Just keep up with your stacking. Remember to make it smaller. There we go. Always use bigger pieces than you need. It allows you room for error. But if you want to be pedantic, by all means. I'm not big into measuring. Not today. All right, here we go. Here's all our pieces ready. Okay, so we can do a test run and put it all together. Just gotta force it into a bend. That it all goes in. Now it's, it wants to resist, it wants to oh, push it back. So you've got to be careful, especially when you're gluing, because now the nut that fastens it is sitting deeper than this might reach. So when we assemble it, we've got to... Yeah, let me just see if that's in camera. Let me zoom out if I have to. Oh, no. Let me just zoom out. Right, so we've got to push it all down, put our pommel on, so nothing fine, the nuts. Okay, got it, there we go. So normally did you take your, let's just make that shorter. Okay, this is a 3.2 mil raising rod. I've drilled a 3.5 millimeter hole. All right. Let me just put your. Talking about playing with rods and nuts. It's all rather filthy. Okay, so as it tightens up, I can see it's all taking shape. There we go. We don't want to over tighten it. We don't want to risk run the risk of breaking off the the um, threaded rod at the end of the hand of the tang there. And yes, that, that looks very cool. So now, I'm gonna glue that. I'm not gonna show you, but I mean, you should all know how to glue a handle together. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could leave it like this, but the epoxy fills up all the small gaps and, and so forth. But you can see there, it's got a real neat fit. There are no gaps. Any small gaps are insignificant. They'll be taken up by the epoxy and it'll all be, uh, once, once I've ground this all clean, it'll all look very, very smart. So there you go. That's how I fit uh, shim stock spaces for my uh, radius stacked handles. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.